Hello, I'm Daphne Good in the brand new College and Regional Visitor Center. You can come and enjoy this. There's a big open house on February 1st. I'm learning about exploring Colleton through this brand new guide. And did you know that the region actually takes its name from the Coast Salish word Coetzin, generally translated as warm land. Welcome to Go Island, Cowichan Valley. On today's show, there's so much to explore right in our own backyard. The TransLink referendum and mayor's revolt. And be part of a successful heart and stroke event. All that and more on Go Island, Cowichan Valley. Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network. It is a perfect day for coffee inside this gorgeous center and I'm going to be speaking with Sonia Nagel who is the executive director of the Duncan Cowichan Chamber of Commerce and they are the owner operators of this Cowichan Regional Visitor Center. It's such a great space Sonia. It's a beautiful space. We're so proud of it. Oh I bet. Now tell us, it was 10 years in the making so briefly what was the history there? 10 plus years of thousands of volunteers and hours to secure funding, to secure a site. Uh, the mission was to get a facility that we would be able to showcase the entire Cowichan Valley. We were looking at the right location. We had a couple of sites along the 10 years that we visited. Right. And then we entered into this phenomenal agreement with the BC Forest Discovery Center. And it's like being a tourist in your own town. I've already discovered a lot of things from being here about what the Cowichan and Valley has to offer. So let's get right into talking about the dream, the design of the building itself. Where did it come from? The dream actually is uh, is inspired from a Cowichan barn, a Cowichan Valley barn, typical red barn. <laughs> so uh, we we call it a barn cut on a diagonal, and you'll yeah. see that when you're looking at it from different angles. Yeah. But uh, we will show you the uh, the photo of the barn in Cobble Hill that it was designed after. That is and so fabulous. It's a great story. The architect is actually uh, putting it into a design competition uh, in North America for some architectural awards. Wow. So it's, it's very exciting. So it is a $2 million project which includes the BC Forest Discovery Center. Uh, they have about $800,000 worth of rentals that are, are, are going to take place here in the, little, in the next little while, including a, a new parking lot, a not great at parking lot, better lighting. Uh, so there's a lot that's still ongoing with the, the entire project. But out of that two million, uh, a good chunk of it is funded by the Island Coastal Economic Trust. Uh, here on the island. The municipality of North Cowichan is also a funder, the city of Duncan, and then our last funding partner to come on board was the Cowichan Regional Visitor, or the, I'm sorry, the Cowichan Valley Regional District. Exactly. Let's talk about some of the suppliers because you've had terrific support. It, it's, it's always great to be injecting money uh, toward local business and, and helping the economy, especially you being connected with the Chamber of Commerce, it's what it's all about really, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, first and foremost, Pacific Builders, uh, Pacific Homes, uh, supplied all of the building material for, uh, for the facility. So they were in uh, the project quite some time ago. The contractor, uh, general contractor, was awarded to Kinetic Construction, an island firm and uh, they were a delight to work with. Mm. And uh, then we engaged a number of local suppliers. Uh, Gillingham Cabinets supplied the, uh, the cabinets, Live Edge Design supplied the, uh, the countertop and this wonderful table Yeah, as this is well. a beauty, exactly. isn't it? And uh, landscaping, again, was all done locally. And then on top of it, we went out to our local businesses to populate all of the um, props for the interpretive displays. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we had everything from kayaks and uh, golf clubs and wine barrels all donated again from our various members. Excellent. Also a modern telecommunications system that was donated. Absolutely, yes. Um, AGS Business Systems came to us and said they would like to donate a fax, photocopier, scanner, uh, a 
workhorse of a machine valued at $7,000 so that the chamber and the visitor center could produce some wonderful professional marketing materials moving forward to grow our business and to again receive visitors. Oh, so yeah. that was a great donation. Uh, a number of other suppliers that have come on board, Monk supplied uh, our office furnishings, Prices Alarms, uh, again a long time member here at the chamber, uh, supplies our security system. So Perfect. we've used all of, again, the local and island uh, suppliers. Christy Grant is the Visitor Services Coordinator here at this beautiful center. And Christy, I do want to talk about the wonderful welcome people will have when they arrive at the center because the door, the welcome door, is a tribute to uh, a pioneer in this region, Herb Doman. Absolutely. The Doman family commissioned the door to be created by Shaman Woodworking and local business. And it's going to be a really lovely tribute to Herb, who was a, definitely a pioneer in the logging industry um, in this area. In fact, he delivered his first load of lumber to my grandfather, Alan Pierce, <laughs> years and years ago. So that's sort of a fun personal con connection it for me. Um, the, each side of the door will be different, yeah. and uh, Arnhem is putting a lot of, uh, a lot of time and, and love into creating it. Uh, with a mosaic of leaves on one side representing different deciduous trees in our region. Mm -hmm. So we're very much looking forward to seeing it installed and Super. happily in its new home. And it will be installed, we hope, by the open house day? It absolutely will be. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so we're sure looking forward to that happening. That's a good deadline. <laughs> it is a good deadline. Well, I have learned so much already. The, the lavender labyrinth, I learned about woodworking and quilt companies and artists. There is so much here in the Cowichan Valley. I just want to talk about the interpretive displays. And probably a good place to start is the map itself. I'm sure even people who live in the Cowichan Valley have not been everywhere, like Nittnat Lake as an example. We're of Cowichan region is a very vast region and there is an awful lot to see. So we find um, that having the map there on our Celebrate Cowichan interpretive display really allows people, whether they're locals or otherwise, to put their put everything into perspective and know where things are and how to get places because mm -hmm. not everybody realizes that the Cowichan region runs from Yellow Point to the Malahat and, and west to Nitnat. Planning some stimulating or relaxing trips in the valley is easy. After a quick break, we'll tell you about the variety of adventures available to you. Carrying on with the interpretive signs, what to see, where to go, that's absolutely perfect, of course. Shop Cowichan, the outdoors, flavors and foodies, we grow it here, creative Cowichan, Cowichan wine, oceans, rivers and lakes. I mean, nothing has been missed here. Let's talk about the outdoors because I know there are some great opportunities, so give us an idea. Absolutely. Well, the outdoors is definitely something which, which Cowichan is very rich with, lots of outdoor opportunities for people. We do have a lot of people that come to this area to cycle and hike. Mm. Um, there's a huge geocaching event happening here in October, which is another thing that's bringing people from all over the world to our region and we're very excited about that. Mm -hmm. So on our outdoors uh, interpretive display, you will find trail maps, you'll find some cycling maps or maps that we can highlight for cycling for you, um, and you'll find other outdoor things that our area is known for. Awesome, and following along with that, in the natural world, there's just so many great areas near the ocean. There are rivers, there are lakes, and I'm sure you're going to be able to tell people about how to navigate around all of those great bodies of water. We absolutely can. We have people that come here wanting to kayak, to canoe, to obviously swimming is a big thing. Uh, tubing the Cowichan River in the summer is another great opportunity. And so we have um, we have businesses that we represent in, in a number of those fields, and we have pamphlets and brochures that people can use to visit a beach or to go and, and visit a river, um, whether it be a nature park or a public beach. We do have a lot of people in this area that have said, you know what, I've never been there. I've lived here all my life and I've never driven the Pacific Marine Route through Port Renfrew. Um, so that's very interesting. A lot of people sort of drive the Trans-Canada Highway and maybe explore 10 kilometers on either side and, yeah. and don't really you know, allow their boundaries to go further than that. Um, so there's a lot for locals to see and, and Vancouver Islanders as well. We found, I found over the 
Christmas time when we were open for the Christmas Express at the Forest Discovery Centre, a large percentage of our visitors were from Nanaimo and Victoria coming to this area to explore what the Cowichan has to offer. Ride the train, of yeah. course, is a highlight <laughs> for the children and adults as well. Um, but there's a lot of people that are having staycations and they're exploring Vancouver Island. And yeah. They're not wanting to go further for various reasons and right. we have so much for them to see and do in this area and that, that there's lots to do. So now, like, what a kind of an opportunity would you offer for the volunteers because I know they're busy and their phones are ringing and people are already coming in here um, and you need more volunteers yes we do as a visitor center we and a larger space now we absolutely do we have a, a great group of volunteers right now some are fairly new to us others have been with our with our visitor center for a number of years uh, everybody's coming from a different place uh, different backgrounds but everybody has something to offer the visitors so we do go through a bit of an application process with people and um, if, uh, and if everything works out, we're happy to run a Tourism Visitor Information Centre Council training for them, uh, which we do a few times a year, and then equip people to participate as a volunteer. So we like our volunteers to be here three to four hours a week, mm -hmm. um, and uh, as I say, we do on-site training, and then we do also the Destinations BC training as well to equip people, because every visitor that comes through the door has a different set of questions. Oh, I bet. And often in a different language. <laughs> so um, we embrace people that also have a second language to offer um, to help us communicate better with our visitors. There are indeed some amazing artists here in the Cowichan Valley and one of them is Christy. She's going to show us some great stuff. Voila, the Buddha board. Where did this idea come from, Christy? Well, the Buddha boards have been around for a few years. Um, this, I thought it was a spectacular idea for our design, when our design team thought to mount a Buddha board on our creative Cowichan display, <laughs> uh, because it gives a bit of an interactive opportunity, especially for children and, and anybody who wishes to express themselves. Yeah. And they're very simply, they come with a brush, we keep a little jar of water here, and you paint. <laughs> I love it. And do whatever you choose. So Anybody um, can be an artist. Anybody can be an artist here. <laughs> um, there, oops, and we got a tooth that's going to have to be painted down here, I think. No, he's drooling. Oh, no. <laughs> so they're great fun, and um, lots of children have had, had fun with them um, during the time that we've been open climbing up and, and uh, painting it. Some decide to paint the whole thing black, <laughs> and then they realize they have to then wait until it dries. Yeah. Um, because as soon as it dries, as you can see, my image is disappearing as yeah. the water evaporates. Um, it's disappearing and then it's a blank slate to start all over again. It's almost like a sandcastle in a different kind of way, right? Yep, and oh, we will have the smaller versions um, for sale in our retail section sometime in the near future. Perfect, so mm -hmm. don't forget the open house. It's a wonderful opportunity to explore Cowichan Valley and look at all the rich outdoor opportunities and, and wineries and there's going to be lots of fun on February 1st. So give us a rundown again of who will be here and what people can participate in. This week. Well, in addition to our nine interpretive displays, we will have demonstration in the morning by two Cowichan knitters, uh, ladies that make the uh, Cowichan sweaters. So they will be two of them on site doing a demonstration. The Raptors will be here, I believe from 11 30 to 2 with some birds uh, on display. Cowichan hikers will be here speaking to people about the various hiking trails available to uh, to walk in the Cowichan region and talking to people about their weekly hikes that they yeah. do. Um, Sue Coleman has spoken about being here and doing a little demonstration. She's a local, well-known local artist. And I have a couple of other people in the wings that are thinking they might join us and, and uh, give people the opportunity to learn more about they, what they do. Perfect. Well, it's a wonderful opportunity to explore your own community, be a tourist in your own hometown. It's a great thing to do and it's way cheaper than getting on a plane and flying off somewhere else. So thanks so much, Christy, for My the pleasure. hospitality. And, uh, and we want to make sure that we go out now and enjoy that uh, great day. Coming up after a quick break, details about the February 1st Open House event and how you can participate in one of the most successful events in BC. When we come back, Premier Christy Clark has promised to hold a referendum on TransLink's multi-billion dollar wish list. But mayors in Metro Vancouver are revolting. They say voters will never approve paying extra taxes even though they want extra services. Can direct democracy succeed in Canada or will Clark be forced to break her election promise? <laughs> 